the seventh chapter, for the great day of their wrath has come, who is able to stand? Mm -hmm. It demonstrates that even in the midst of this awesome display of wrath, of God's wrath, the mercy of God is still presented and seeking to bring men unto himself. And during this process of the sealing of the 144,000, there was an interlude. And then there was also four angels and the four winds. Now, I'm telling you, this thing had me, you know, kind of like, you know, Lord, what's really going on? And so, Oh, as I, I begin to think about the four winds and the four, um, the four angels, at one point, I thought that the same, these four angels were the four angels in chapter one, but they are totally different. And um, the ceiling... Let me take my time because you know my heart is beating. Y'all forgive me because this is the first time Mama's doing this. Okay. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> we You're here doing, with you. We here doing with fine. You. You're doing great. Keep take going. your time. Take a Thank deep breath. You. And Dr. Short, can you take this down for a minute? Okay. Um. Yes. And what got me was the opening of chapter seven, because it started out with after these things. And so that made me had to go back to chapter six, finding out what took place, mm -hmm. the opening of the six seals that John saw, you know, standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds. For well, these angels, were standing at the corners of the earth. The angels who were prominent in Revelations are the instruments that God used to temporarily suspend judgment on the earth. They, they are used both to withhold judgment as well as to execute it. And when I began to research about the four corners of the earth, it speaks of a global authority and activity under God's sovereignty. Holding back, it is uh, it's a Greek word, and I'm, I'm going to spell it because I can't pronounce it. It is K-R-A-T-E-W. And it's a strong word meaning to grasp or to seize and to restrain, <coughs> excuse me. And it comes with stress, power, or ability in relation to a job to be done. Then we have the four winds was related to the restraint and the judgment that followed to the entire globe. The whole earth is affected. And in several places in scripture, you'll find that the wind is, a, is symbolic of divine judgment. After the six seals of the judgment was open, there was like, I, I would say like an intermission. You ever watch like the Ten Commandments? And you know, that's a long, that's a long movie. And halfway through, there was an intermission. And that's what they called the interlude, which meaning a pause. Because the seals in the seventh chapter, the seventh uh, seal could not go through until the sealing of the 144,000. Many people believe that the 144,000 were the... Um, Jehovah's Witness, because they used that, that it was them. But in actuality, the 144,000 were the first fruits of the, uh, of the Lord, meaning it dealt with the 12 tribes of Israel. That is why they were sealed. And 
and I'm going to look at my notes, and it said the 144,000 is said to be the first fruits that they are being sealed. This means they are the first converts after the tribulation begins. They are sealed at the beginning of the tribulations. Any questions? So if I'm understanding, understanding what you're saying that um, the 144,000 are the first fruit from the, the Jews after yes. the tribulation period. Yes, before okay. at the beginning of the tribulation, before the tribulation um, period start, the great tribulation. Okay, before 144,000 had to be sealed. Okay before all this trouble comes okay before it starts yes okay. and why were they sealed now that's a good question were they not the evangelists uh the jewish evangelists for those who are going to experience tribulation and weren't they sealed by the holy spirit no i believe they were sealed to be spared from the judgment that was coming upon the earth they couldn't be touched, they couldn't be killed. Because when you go into the eighth and the ninth chapter, these things that were happening on the earth were not touched those because they was the first converts, the first fruits of God dealing with the 12 tribes of Israel. But in in um, chapter six, the question one, for the great day of his wrath has come and who mm -hmm. shall be able to stand? Mm -hmm. So my belief, correct me if I'm wrong, that these 144 were those Jews who were going to evangelize, be and left on the earth to, go, to, through, to uh -huh. go through tribulation, to bring yes. others to Christ. Am I right? Yes. Okay. All right. And, and, and let me read about the, um, the first, uh, um, it's, it's, oh, go ahead. Hold, hold on a minute. Um, I hear you agreeing with her, but. I'm trying to where you get the evangelist to aspect from. No, I had, I'm just, I'm asking you this question because it had, I've seen a lot of, and I've read a lot of different books and mm -hmm. some people believe that they are the evangelists, Jews who were left on the earth um, to bring about salvation. And I'm just asking her if she believes that that's true or not. I'm not saying that it's true. I'm asking uh, oh, okay, her. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Okay. no, I was asking her a question to okay, clarify okay. for me. Okay, I got well, Feel free to jump in, Dr. Short, and help no, us. Out. Well, again, you're going to find a lot of opinions. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, I was just curious of what she thought. Yeah, okay. Well, <coughs> just to add my opinion to it, um, the Bible does say earlier in the Gospels when Jesus was teaching that the days were not short and even the very elect would not be saved, that mm -hmm. he, he spared. So there, he's, he's, he's pulling us out. I believe that we're being, we're going to be pulled out before. Yeah, uh, I believe we're gone before this happens. And I believe that also similar to that, this 144,000, uh, I believe that he is not going to send them to evangelize, but he's, a, he's sparing them because okay. there, there's going to be so many of them that's going to be killed and go through uh yes. through that period um and i think the only two witnesses that we definitely know of right. are the two men that do come down and mm -hmm. witness for a certain amount of time i think these are those two witnesses the only two witnesses that god wants them to listen to whether they listen to them or not that they're mm -hmm. the last two preachers on the face of the earth and we do that know that for definite now, mm -hmm. about four four thousand, I think that God again is showing His grace and His mercy. He's sparing them, okay. um, just like He's going to spare us uh, by just shortening the time. Again, all uh, this is just speculative. No, I was just asking um, her because I have, right, I have read that. I agree with you. I was just uh -huh. seeing what you thought. That's all. I got you. Anyway, I was. Um, good evening. I believe that the hundred forty-four thousand was twelve thousand. Um. It's from the tribes. Yes. Mm -hmm. 12 tribes is 12,000 per tribe. Right. I believe, from what I have been reading, that these 144,000 had the seal, mm -hmm. seal on their head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have been reading. 
So I thought they were the, the true Jews. I, I thought now, I, whether it was converted over after tribulation, but I thought they were from the 12 yeah. tribes. And it could send us from the tribes, but they are from the tribes. They are from the tribes. But I, and, I, and what I've been reading was 12,000 per tribe. If you count the 12,000 per tribe, that's 144. Right. That was it. And, and these are the Jews because they were the first convert. Because if the you first. go back into the book of Genesis, Genesis. Um, and it deals with the 12 tribes of Israel, the God sealed yes. them yes. to spare Israel. them from this great tribulation. Yes. Those so it made me wonder. Uh-huh. So it made me wonder what was the great tribulation. And so as I looked up, according to the Ungus Dictionary, the great tribulation is a period of unparalleled suffering that according to the premillennial eschatology will mm -hmm. precede the establishment of the future kingdom of Israel. And they use Acts 1 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. The trouble will embrace the entire earth, yet it is centered upon Jerusalem and Palestine, being called by um, Jeremiah the time of Jacob's distress. So the Jewish people have gone back to Palestine in unbelief. Yes. Amen? Yes, amen. amen. And they're now, they are, they're going back in droves now, mm -hmm. back to the land now. I would tell us to watch the fig tree that is blooming. It's, they're going back as we speak. Did we lose you? Hello? Yes. Hello? I'm here. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I just I just wanted to um, give a figure that right now there is anywhere from according to who you listen to from 17 million to maybe 20 million Jews worldwide. And that's mm -hmm. some that's some that are half Jews, some that are claiming to be Jews, but they're really not connected to a fan, but just consider themselves to be Jews, 20 million, which is a small amount of people understanding that Delaware uh -huh. has one million people in it. So the, the children of Israel is about 17 times larger than Delaware, which is not big for a country at all. So it's probably, um, I'm not sure what, maybe California may have 20 some million in it. I'm sure, I don't think Israel is as big, the amount of people in Israel is not as big as the amount of people in California. Wow. Uh, 144,000 is kind of relatively a small amount of people. Co consider we're talking millions. That, that's real there. Oh, okay. Okay, doctor, go ahead, finish teaching us. Yes, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> and then as we move into um, chapter eight, the seventh seal was opened which produced silence in the heavens for about a half hour. And a half hour, it seems like it's not long, but when the angels and the elders are used to praising and worshiping God, a half hour seemed to be a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the seven angels had seven trumpets and the trumpets sound the alarm for war and threw the enemy into a panic. And they called an assembly of God's people. These seven trumpets will sound as a battle alarm during the great tribulation. And as we go on, there were three, three of the four judgments echoed the plagues of Exodus. Because when you go into the book of um, Revelation in the eighth chapter, they do echo um, Exodus. It proceeds by giving of the law at Mount Sinai, the hell in connection 
with the trumpets. The sea was turned to blood. And you also have the darkness in the fourth. And you compare, you know, in, in Exodus 10, 21, 23, the four areas affected was the earth, the sea, fresh water, and the sky, which made up of the whole human environment of ancient, um, of ancient times. These four spheres were that of Jews and Christians acknowledged as God's creation. The first trumpet that was sounded was a plague against the vegetation. One third of the vegetation of the plant is burnt up by the, um, during the great uh, tribulation. The second trumpet brings a plague on the sea. The third trumpet brings a plague on the fresh waters and which that one uh, kind of got me because the name of the star is Wormwood. Mm -hmm. And yeah. wormwood is a very bitter substance. Um, and I'm going to spell this word because I cannot pronounce it. P-R-O-V-E-R-B-I-A-L. For bitterness and sadness. And a third of the river and a third of the waters were bitter. These provisions was a disaster that stayed the same in each one of these trumpets. The fourth trumpet that sounded brings a plague on the heavens and darkness on the earth. Nothing fell from the sky, but the dimmy light of the sun, the moon, and the stars, and subsequently of both day and night, it sent a signal that the worst is yet to come. Question, comments, and statements. Because the eighth chapter dealt with these trumpets. Then I will go on. And as we entered into the ninth, was the sounding of the fifth trumpet, and a star fell from heaven. Now, this one really kind of confuse me a little bit because some think that this star that fell was satan some say it was an angel whether good or bad they did not know but to this angel was given the key to the bottomless pit and some feel that this angel was associated with satan The bottomless pit is also known as the abyss. It's a prison for certain demons. Some believe that when you go back to Genesis, that the angels that came down and had affairs with women, some think that these are the demons that are in the, um, the bottomless pit, which is in the center of the earth. This is what they said. But then my question was, and I'm going to throw this question out. Let me see if I can find the question that I wrote. Or I thought that when they fell from heaven, they became demonic. But yet and still in chapter 9, they still call some of these demons angels. And that's what kind of confused me. So Dr. Short, can you help me out with this? Why were they still called angels, even though that some of them were demonic? Excuse me, angels was not necessarily, um, I, I've seen others that were doing teaching similar to this and they were saying, that the demons were still called angels, even though um, we recognize uh, that there is a, to us, there's a difference between a demon and an angel. Um, I, I think that angel, the word, I think they're still angels, 
um, <laughs> even though that the word demon recognize that there is a turn in in their their mindset now that and who they're serving. Um, but but for all intents and, pers and purposes, an uh, angel is again uh, again I guess uh, a, a terrestrial being. And, uh -huh. and so they are still that they are still terrestrial beings uh or uh, am i am i saying or should that be celestial beings correct me someone but they are still celestial. so celestial thank you they're still celestial beings and so i think that's the only th definition of what an angel is a celestial being i don't think it has so much to do with who they serve but but mm -hmm. we but generally angels are known to serve god but angels can turn that don't make them angels but we have i think the the secular world calls an angel somebody good oh that's an angel that person is sweet but that's not the true definition biblically an angel could be a demon or one that worship god okay that's just my take and also a third of the angels fell with satan so right um, they that was my understanding that these are probably some of his um those that followed him um and were bound up at, at, for a set time. Um, but I believe that, that, you know, like Dr. Short said, that they, they're, they're celestial beings, they were angels, just on the wrong side. Yes, because we have to also remember, God gave them free will as well. Yes. Amen. 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 He did. And this, and, and this angel, whether good or evil, you know, he was given the key to open up the bottomless pit. And out of this bottomless pit, these creatures here, they were called, they were locusts. And these locusts were agents of God's judgment. They were believed to be spiritual beings mm -hmm. and cannot be destroyed by man. They were not like the locusts that um, was in the plague in Egypt because they ate up a third of the vegetation and all of that this stuff. But these locusts, they were actually given a command. They were not to touch anything, but they were to torment man for five months. These locusts, they were intelligent and they were capable of leadership. And the king of them was the angel of the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe that the one that was given the key to open up the bottomless pit could not have been Satan if he's the king in the bottomless pit, mm -hmm. whose name in Hebrew is A-B-A-D-D-O-N. And in Greek, his name is Apollyon which means destroyer. And this is where men wanted to die, but they couldn't because these locusts were put here just to torment them. And they tormented these men for five months. This description is a picture, is one of unnatural and awesome cruelty. These locusts is a result of evil influence of Satan. And out of their mouths was issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. Fire and brimstone is known as the wrath of God in Hebrew. Then we see that the devil carries on his design by plunging the eyes of men. Because we know when smoke comes up, you know, we are blinded, we can't see. Mm -hmm by putting out the light and the knowledge and promoting ignorance in error. And then during this time, there was a sixth trumpet that had sounded, which loosed the four angels that were bound at the great river Euphrates. And notice they call these as well, like Dr. Short said, angels, they were bound. Um, at the river Euphrates. And you at the um, Euphrates River is where everything began. It's also associated with the first sin, which the first murder, the first organized revolt against mm -hmm. God and 
these all can be found in Genesis. Mm -hmm. The first war and the first um, dictatorship. You can go through Genesis, the second chapter, all the way up to the 14th chapter to find these. Mm -hmm. And then at last, after the sealing of the 144,000, now these, the locusts, were told not to harm any of the vegetation on the earth. But when these horses came about, when the four, when the four angels were loose at the uh, river of Euphrates, they was instructed to kill a third of mankind. Prior in, in chapter six, it was said that maybe a billion people had died. And now in, in chapter nine, another billion people is going to die because of the horsemen and, and what they were put here to do. These horsemen are destructions and they are demonic because of um, the ceiling of the, the 144,000. Once the 144,000 was sealed, they was loose to kill. And this invasion went on for 13 months because if you notice the locusts, they were tormented uh, man for five months. But then when the horsemen came about, they, their invasion was to last 13 months and they was allowed to kill yet another billion of, uh, uh, of mankind. But even in this process, all that men had gone through, mm -hmm. they still yet would not repent. Mm -hmm. And that was the closing of um, chapter nine. But the one thing that I wanted to, to add was these horsemen, had on a breastplate. They had on crowns. They were hideous looking creatures. But the thing that got me was that breastplate. And a breastplate, and they, um, the name of the um, jewel that was carried was J-A-C-I-N-T-H, which is the first stone of the third row in the high priest's mm -hmm. breastplate. Mm -hmm. So it made me wonder, were these spirits, you know, of high ranking to, ha to have a breastplate that, you know, they, they equated with the breastplate of the high priest in the Old Testament? Question, comments, and statement. I think that... Um within as you as you study um god and his strategy it's kind of like um like war you've got your generals your sergeants etc mm -hmm. and i say likewise with satan you have the same thing um and that um just as i know some some people in in ministry or their particular anointing they may be called an apostle or they could be a prophet or what have you mm -hmm. and i think that they too um had to have certain ranking um mm -hmm. even in satan's army and to be used by god because all of this bring about god's judgment of course that they too um as we look to nature we can look to the spirit and so these 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 people that were used weren't just your regular ordinary uh some of them were bound for centuries um, but they had a particular position if you will uh within um not only satan's um army but also in god's army with you see your cherubim your seraphim etc and so that's kind of like how i equated that mm. anyone else thank you yes it's amazing all that they went through and yet they still would not repent yeah, that 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 kind of shocked me. I mean, because when when 
a loc and and these locusts had tails like scorpions and mm -hmm. you know when a scorpion stings you you know that you can die that from that yes but they couldn't even die and and yet all the torment that they went through now all the ones that went through this torment mm -hmm. was because they were not sealed mm -hmm. could it be they also did not accept even in all of this that they were going through they still did not accept um Jesus Christ is Lord. Is yes, yes. Uh, I think ultimately I that's why they went through it. Yes. Uh, but you would think that, and I also believe that sometimes this is in it for those people that may be reading Revelation to make them understand what's coming. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go through that. <laughs> Accept them now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because it's frightening and it's something that's very unpleasant. And I plan not to be here. I hope to be with the church to be already gone out of here. But for those that, that, think that it's a joke or that um, it can be a tool of evangelism for people today, uh, for them reading it, not to be afraid, but as, as we talked about before, mercy, seeing the mercy of God for those that will accept him now. And I kind of took that too. Amen. Amen. Because even through all of this, God still had mercy on mankind mm -hmm. to give them an opportunity to accept you know his son but yet man's heart was hardened uh-huh uh i'm wondering i'm starting excuse me i'm starting to question that now because uh formerly i was believing that even during the tribulation period and, mm -hmm. and, and, and that they had a, a opportunity to repent um and i'm reading this like you guys are but now uh -huh. I'm starting to wonder in the back of my mind, even though they had opportunity to repent, mm -hmm. did they have the ability to repent? Now, because in, in, Thess in Thessalonians, when in Thessalonians, uh, Paul mentioned in the second chapter when he's taken out the way, uh, the Holy Ghost is going to be removed. And okay. this, so then uh, the, the, the full unleasing of all these demons are going to come. Mm -hmm. And so that that convicts us is no longer on the earth that 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 uh, brought us to common sense is no longer there so does man have the ability to fully repent to me i'm thinking now we're looking at man at his most vulnerable state there's no holy spirit that there, there's no that that, right. that that second consciousness there that second conscious now man is only left to his own uh inability to that proves that man without the holy spirit has not the ability to repent don't he have the ability to to confess or to or to come to god without the bible says without he said, I guess he says, man could not come to him unless I draw him. I think this is proof that man cannot come to God unless the Holy Spirit draws them to God. So even though they, the opportunity to repent if they could, but the inability, I think, is, is just too strong that they just don't have nothing on the inside of man's flesh that has the mind. Because if man could repent then, then why couldn't the demons repent? So I, I think that the people on earth were on the same level as demons now. Demons don't have the ability to repent because I'm quite sure some of them, after they got knocked to the earth and lost that battle, like, Lord, we would love to go back, but <laughs> going to be true. See, I believe that as well because I was just reading um, as um, Elder Peaky was said, Dr. Peaky was saying about the breastplate and I was reading, he said, the riders of these horses had colored breastplates, mm -hmm. fire, smoke, brimstone, the place that came from the horse's mouth, fire, smoke, and brimstone, signified evil deeds. He said, and God judges the evildoers. I, as I kept reading and kept reading I, and going down, he said that the third of the angels followed them and said in a loud voice, if you they want to worship the beast and its image. They receive the mark. They, if they receive that mark on their forehead or on their hand, they have no ability to repent. They are considered evildoers. As you said, Dr. Short, there, there's no ability. Angels nor man can repent now. The Holy Spirit has gone. It's up. He's gone. There is no ability. Yes, ma'am. Then my question is, 
could they fall back on what they heard prior to the spirit of God leaving? They have the mark on them. Mm. Once, they receive that, once they have received that mark, there is no going back. They have already worshiped the beast. Mm. And the well, mark. But, but everybody's not going to, uh, I don't think everybody's going to take that mark. There's nothing in the scripture that says everybody. Not everybody. Not everybody's going to receive it. Right. So, not everybody. Right. But so the that, ones that do, well, the my, my that do point, cannot, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. The ones that do. The ones that do cannot re fall back. But the ones that have not received it have an opportunity, as Dr. Pinkney is, is about to say, they do have an opportunity to repent. Even though the Holy Spirit may have been taken up out of here, they go back on what they have learned, what they have heard, what they have received. Our minds may be still there in the midst of the tribulation. We okay. can hold back on what we have learned okay let me ask this is that mm -hmm. the bible says that it's the holy spirit is the one that brings things back to our remembrance yes mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at now that these people are nowhere near the church time when things when the holy spring spirit brings things back to our remembrance he brings conviction in they're no longer in that period of time I, and this is my personal because uh, we've still got several of you guys to go. I'm looking to see if there's any period in here where we see evidence of anybody repenting and going. We may say we may see opportunity, but do we see evidence of anybody mm. who did not accept the mark of the beast that died and went to heaven? Wow. No, we don't see I evidence. I think after chapter is it after chapter three, you no longer hear the word church mentioned again. Because we're taken out. The church is yes. taken out. We're gone. So the 144,000 and the number that no man can number. Right. I think that's it. If you don't make the wow. number that no man can number, if you're not a part of the 144,000, I, I think that's it. There, so I think that, that second train is not coming. I think Jesus. that's all. Jesus. You know. Uh, Jesus, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Because Ooh, if you look Jesus. at if you look at uh, Revelations nine and twenty, it starts out, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Mm -mm, nothing. 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 And, and that's sad. So I'm thinking they're more demon, and we call, they're more demon-like now than anything, because that's the mindset of a demon. There is no such thing where a demon repented. No demons, no de nor Satan. There's no repentance in their language. So a man now has become like his father. Jesus said, mm -hmm. you know, the you're like your dad, the devil, he's a liar from the beginning. And here, uh, that's all I see. They're, they're unrepentant. So, mm -hmm. they're, so, they're, they're, so now they're subject to this. All those demons that we be fighting, the spirit of hate, spirit of envy, spirit of jealousy, all those demons are loosed on the earth on men. And that's what that they're feeling. They're feeling that they're more still, I bet they hate God worse now than they ever did. Wow. They're probably blaming him for, for everything. what happened to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're blaming God. Mm -hmm. So that which was um, kind of a barrier between the full release of that which is unholy is no longer there. But so they that... have the full, it's like the full release of Satan on the earth now. But isn't this the time of God's wrath and judgment on those that didn't true. accept him? True. That's true. Yes, it is, because after this yeah. trumpet, Mm -hmm. There are two more woes that is Whew. worse than the one, worse than this one yeah. that right. was uh, in chapter nine. And I was like, oh my God, it gets who, worse. Would, who can withstand 
that. Yeah. Well, you don't have any choice. You're down here. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you're here, you want to go through or die. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you want to die. You won't be able to. It's just hell on earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Wow. That's going to be a sad day. Mm -hmm. so is that that they have been turned over to reprobate? We hear that word so much. Is that when they have been turned over to a reprobate? But there's no Holy Spirit degree. So um, no, no, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to get understanding because people use that word so oh. much, mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to get an understanding because it's so out of context. And is that during that time too as well, or is just? I, I'm I'm not quite sure because I've heard a lot about being. Um, turned over but i'm like what would cause god to turn a person over to a reprobate mind yeah dr short uh, well i just think just because um that god uh sometimes we think that god is unlimited in his uh grace and his mercy and i think that just i uh, just believe that at times god just leads us to our own devices, leads us to mm -hmm. our own minds, our own thoughts. And that's all it is. Not, I don't think that's, it's so much that God turns us over. He turns us over to ourselves. And and I think this, this is what you're going to see in the last day, is that God, when the Spirit of God withdraw, and, and that's Second Thessalonians 2 and yeah. 7, when it talks yeah. about him that led, when he's taken out the way, um that's the only thing that he's a, he used the word let but the word let is hindered the holy spirit is the only thing that's hindering you know these events from taking a pl place right now he's the only yes. thing that's hindering and so i think you're going to see man in his natural state a murderer a hater a, all those things that's described there uh that we might call reprobate the only reason why the reprobate because uh because of the fact that the holy spirit just left them you like to use the word Ichabod. Ichabod. <laughs> right. Ichabod, the spirit of the Lord has left this place. And so, so we're left to our own true nature. So right now, we as Christians of God, we're we're not we're living a life that is that is uh provided for us through Christ through the Holy Spirit. And uh, I don't think we see we don't see the true human nature because of the Holy Spirit. The true human nature will probably be like uh, somebody crazy as uh, Jeffrey Dahmer that will kill you and eat you at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's someone that has no God, no consciousness. And the Bible does speak that there are a few people that don't even have a conscience. But we're looking at now a whole world of people that's still going to be a couple of billion. Right now, I think it's about five to six billion people on the earth. So if you take, you can still take away a few billion, there can still be a lot of, one billion is still a lot of people. Mm -hmm. One billion is still three times the amount of people that's on the United States. The United States only has 367 million people. So if there's only a billion people, that's still three times the amount of, of people that's on the United States. That's still a lot of people mm -hmm. on the earth. Mm -hmm. Wow. My God, my God, my God. That's gonna be a lot of hating people. Yeah. It surely is. A lot of crying out, a lot, a lot of people trying to hide up underneath a rock, kill me, kill me, and still yet can't die. Mm. True. I think that's the thing that scared me as a young teenager. Uh, yeah. I heard the preacher talking about you're gonna try to kill yourself, won't be to die. So you may have a knife stuck in you, but you won't die. Mm -hmm. Shooting yourself, yes. you won't die. It and we, we were taught, they say, you could cut your head off and you walk around with your head in one hand and you walking around <laughs> headless, but you're still, but you're still alive. Yeah. That's what scared me. Actually, the book of Revelation from a young girl scared me because, you know, of the things that we were told and it was never truly ever broken down Explain. to where we can see the blessings in, in, in Revelation. We were just told about the scary things of, of revelations. I think that education goes beyond hell and brimstone. It brings yeah. about teaching, it brings about practical application, and it brings understanding. And a lot of times when we were children, that didn't happen at all. You just exactly. accepted it, you swallowed it, and that was it. 
Yeah. But now that you study it now, it's a book of hope. It's a book of, you know, it's a book of judgment. But for those that love them, you don't have to go through this. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, there's, 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 there's hope because we win. And uh, I was explaining that to somebody. They're scared to death to read Revelation. So I started going through her with it. And so she get the right perspective because Satan doesn't want us to read it because the blessed is the man that what reads. Um, he doesn't want to read us. He wants us to be scared. But mm. in that book, we find out he loses. <laughs> That's, I, it. Amen. That's it. He loses. He loses. You know, so. Amen. Because I was scared to read the book of Revelations. Mm -hmm. and, and then when I would read it, I would fall asleep because that's what people used to tell us. When you start reading the book of Revelation, you're going to get sleepy. You're not going to want to finish it. Then you have these crazy dreams. Mm -hmm. And then they tell you, if you add to this book, you're going to be cursed. Mm -hmm. And if you take away from this book, you're going to be cursed. Mm -hmm. So it was like, then why read it? Mm -hmm. And Actually, I think this is yeah. one of the first times that I have ever really even gone through really trying to understand revelations mm -hmm. because I was so fearful of it. Mm -hmm. But now I know that is nothing to be fearful of. Right. I, I also helped this even further brought about the understanding that when John saw this vision, he couldn't explain half of it. Mm -hmm. So he did it with the best imagery of his time mm -hmm. to the best of his ability, which still scared the crap out of most people, but it was indescribable. So you have to kind of have the Holy Spirit give you that illumination and that revelation and understanding as you go through it, that not all of this, a lot of it's spiritual, true, uh, some of it's literal, but that helped me understand the imagery. It helped me to understand the symbolism, the numbers, the great, all the, all the other things right. that go about yeah. um reading this book because the jews are people of pattern mm, symbols yeah. etc and so when you add the old to the new like you say jesus is revealed totally in revelation so mm -hmm. um it just brings everything full circle to me and it makes a lot of sense now yeah and that's probably why the enemy didn't want us to deal with the book of revelation mm -hmm. because of the fact that it bring us to full circle exactly. to understanding the whole bible yeah I, I do want to bring some clarification on something that I said a little earlier. I okay. do believe that we will go through part of the tribulation period. I believe I, I believe that we will go through the first half. The, the first, first three and a half, half, half years. Yeah. Yes. But not the great tribulation. Right, but not the great tribulation. Okay. I, I believe that too. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I was reading, I can ask this before. I was reading and some people were saying, I've been reading a lot of books and looking at a lot of stuff. They were saying that, um, I don't agree with it, but they were saying that during that half an hour of silence is when Jesus came and raptured the church, you know, in the, in the, in the book. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was why it was quiet in heaven because he was not there to be worshiped and that he had gone back to get his church. So I thought that that was just an interesting spin. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, interesting. that's very interesting. Is that? You know, that, that they weren't praising, they weren't worshiping because he wasn't there. He went back and physically went and got his church. Wow. And then, you know, he came okay. back. And I thought that that was kind of revelatory. I'd never thought about that before, along with, you know, the preparing you for what's ahead. But the fact that he was not in heaven, he literally had come back to earth to get his church. So there wouldn't be the worshiping and the praising and the all that, that went on when he, the lamb is on his throne. So I thought that that was kind of interesting also. Well, I, I, that be the case. My question would be then, when Jesus was on the earth for the three and some period of the year, were there any worshiping going on? Mm. Interesting. That is. Um. <laughs> yeah, it makes, you, it makes you wonder. I, I can't think of any scripture that that will give us any indication whether that would reveal to us what was happening while he was on the earth for three and a half years. The Holy Spirit was here as well, and he is here. It still is. So I mean, he should have been getting his praise on earth, his praise and his worship. Well, well, he, well you're right about, yes, he should have been getting his praise. He should have been. I'm not saying he did, but he should have been. But And, and if you go to the eighth chapter in, in Revelations, it starts out, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, 
and to them were given the seven trumpets. Another angel came mm-hmm. and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto them much incense that he could offer it with prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar and which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, Mm -hmm. which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up to God Mm -hmm. out of the angel's hand. And he took it and he threw it towards earth. The um, seven trumpets, the seven angels with the seven trumpets were being prepared for what was to come. I, I think that's what that silent period was about. It was preparation for what was to come upon the earth. And as I was studying, it was interesting that, you know, since time began, those who were martyred had questions to God. When are you going to act? When are you going to bring about judgment? When are you going to bring about justice? And that um, the prayers are finally being answered by God. And those people that had um, mocked God or persecuted them or hurt them were finally getting the judgment and the wrath of God that was deserving. Right. And I thought that that was very interesting too, because the smoke was the prayers. And it was interesting that one book went on to say about how we can pray something and not think that God, God's forgotten about it. God hasn't forgotten about it. Um, mm-hmm. He may not act on it now as, as far as we see, but there will be a consequence to those who, um, you know, hurt or uh, mock or injure or kill um, his beloved. And I thought that that was a very good, um, another good example of um, spiritual connotation to that particular, those verses. Mm. Um, Amen. I read, I read, and I was trying to find it. It's the second supper or the second feast that Jesus was going to have with the birds for, for um, mocking and hurting and, and mistreating God's people. Mm-hmm. And that he's gonna have the birds to feast off of those people that hurt the false pre- pre- teachers, prophets, mm-hmm. apostles, all of them for hurting God's people. Mm-hmm. And the birds was gonna feast off of their flesh for the specific people that 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 misuse God people. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to find that. I read, I wrote it up, I wrote about it. I think that's during the Battle of Armageddon. Right. That- yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, that they was gonna feast off of those people for six months, I think, mm. three six months or something like that. Could have been. Oh wow. Good. Yes. Just for and 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 God's just for just for misusing and abusing and hurting and killing God's people. Mm-hmm. His wrath, his vengeance is coming to them. That's the second feast. And that amazed me at what um, uh, Pastor Gwen, uh, is it Pastor Gwen? Mm-hmm. Elder Gwen. Elder Gwen was mm-hmm. to remember about the feast. Hmm. Amen. Okay, Dr. Pinckney. Yeah. Uh, any last closing <laughs> statements for us? <laughs> I am good. I am still searching because there's still a lot of things within these three Mm -hmm. chapters Mm -hmm. that I would like to go in and and continue my studies on because it's just fascinating the things that are in this book that God would like to reveal to his people. And, And I just thank God for this course because I would have never thought to come in and peace off the book of Revelation. That was a book that most people shun, and I'm one of them. What I, what I find also is you see a lot of the Old Testament in uh, Revelation. Yes. Um, you see a yes. lot of references. You see a lot of, but it, it, like I say, it's, it's, it's like the whole book, uh, verse upon verse, precept upon precept. It all mm. finally comes to one full picture. Um, and um, it all ties. I mean, I always loved the Old Testament, but now you can really see how the Old Testament ties into the New Testament, which ties into the final book of the Bible, which is yeah. the Because you can't have one without the other. You gotta have them both. Yeah. yeah. You gotta have them both. Full circle. Yeah. 
Because a lot of times, what people don't even realize is that you can see Christ in the Old Testament. Of course, there are mm -hmm. types and shadows of mm -hmm. Christ all through it. Some exactly. people don't even study the Old Testament anymore. That's mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, and in that sense, it lets you know that you can't throw away the Old Testament. Exactly. You need the Old Testament. You need to know what's in the Old Testament because it goes along with the New Testament. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Such a blessing. Such a blessing. Well, the last thing that I just wanted to add, it stands out to me that all the symbolisms that you see in the book of Revelation does come from the Old Testament. Yeah. But you don't see nothing modern. You know, you don't see, John don't see no airplanes. No, I don't think that he could explain an airplane. Right, he couldn't, he, could, he probably couldn't. Like, I seen a giant bird with wings. <laughs> that might have been a helicopter. You don't know. Uh -huh. You know, could have But he had to go with what he knew. He yeah, and so, tank, and God you know? dealt with John based off of what John knew. and, exactly. and good. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you have to understand the Old Testament and their imagery and, uh -huh. and the symbolism of who God was and judgment and wrath and all these things to make this make sense and yeah. uh, it just to me it just light bulbs just keep going off because it's like you were in the old and you were in the new jesus you were there and you this whole this the thin line through is jesus christ yeah all the way through. It, it, exactly. jesus 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 and the revelation is him being revealed not as a baby but who he really is <laughs> yeah. so we got to understand the, the um the symbolic things in the Old Testament, we got to understand the culture and the language that was go. being spoken in yeah. order to bring all of this together. Be, and once we understand that, we'll have a good understanding of the Word of God. I do apologize. Uh, I was wrong. There is New Testament in, uh, not, ju not new, just New Testament, I'm talking about current, um, uh, hidden, it's in, it's in the death, uh, it's in the battle of the war of Armageddon, mm -hmm. uh, the war of God against man. Mm -hmm. It take modern technology to create that type of death with that many people dying. Many, mm -hmm. That many people wouldn't die with bows and arrows back then. But today, there we do have the atomic bombs right to destroy nations in just minutes and seconds and so so it's in the death and, and, and the amount of death that we're going to see uh modern technology to play its only role is only in death and 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 i could be wrong but that's the only place that i see where modern technology can take a place because there's nothing in the old testament i mean uh as far as war they just, you know, swords, stabs, uh, knives, and, and different things, arrows. But I believe when you're talking about uh, the Battle of Armageddon uh, and how the nation is going to fight against God, I think they're going to try to use modern technology. And uh, what they're going to be shooting at, I have no idea. Uh, Elder Grant, I think you had a, a statement. No, it was really interesting what you were saying because one of the signs, which was not in the movie, uh, in many of the, the books that I read and looked at and some of the videos was the fact that man had the ability to kill one, to totally annihilate themselves. That's right. That's mm -hmm. uh, with today's technology, with the, the atomic bombs, etc. Yes. In the first time in history, do, yes. could any of this come to pass? Because before then, like you said, how far can you throw a stone? How far can you throw an arrow, etc.? But now we actually have the ability to totally annihilate one mm -hmm. man. And... Um, and that scripture that Joyce, you know, if it wasn't for his intervening, oh my God, we'd all blow up and be gone. But um, it's the first time. And so I, I, I concur with what you said. Yes. Dr. Pinkney, we're going to leave you the last words and dismissal. Oh, uh, bless the Lord. Well, I, I, I totally, like I said, enjoyed. Um, gaining knowledge because I'm the things that I have learned and re I got books I I don't got paper writing scribble and got notes and I got to put them together because this here was truly an eye opener mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to to hearing the rest of what we gather in the book of revelation what we learned from it and and i thank you guys for allowing me even as nervous as i was in the beginning um 
to to come before you and talk about the things that happened in those three chapters. Amen. 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 Uh, Dr. Pink, before you dismiss, before you dismiss, let me do say say something. Um, who who is next? Who has 10, 11, 12? I do. Okay, I thought so. Okay, so uh, just get with me. I'll get with you this week if you need to send something over so that you need me to screen share because we I have the share button. You you have the oh, share button? Yeah, I have a share button. Oh, well, I see a share button. It's a green button that says share. Yeah, uh -huh. that's it. That's it. It wasn't there earlier, but now it's there. I don't see it. Mo slide your screen up or down, uh, Elder. See if it's oh, I see it now. It wasn't there earlier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, you, you said, Bishop? I'm looking for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> go ahead. Bring your arrow down. Like oh, you're going right to down on, the bottom. Like you're going to do mute or stop your video, and it's right there. I done lost y'all all together. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, uh -oh. but, but she's the last one. She'll put you up on it in time. She's the oh, last one. Oh my Jesus, I done lost y'all. Okay, that's okay. We can see you and hear you. And oh, it's, okay. it's, it's probably it's probably done shrunk because we can see you well. Okay, uh, but this time Dr. Pinkney, go ahead. So that's good. That's that's good then. So everybody can share. Um so uh uh okay, Elder Pinkney, go ahead and dismiss us, please. All righty. All heads bow, hearts clear. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you. We magnify you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord God, in the name of Jesus.